This is my new vintage flapper hat with a cute little stick pin. Let's make it. Ciao friends, Beth the Thimblehooks, and today we're going to make my gorgeous retro vintage flapper hat with ridges and this cute little stick pin. I just love this pattern. I had it in the works for a while and I decided to get it finished up and that's what I did this weekend. What did you guys do this weekend? I made this hat. So let's get started. Right, so I have these two that I made this weekend with the final pattern that I love so much. You can see this one is kind of a rosy pink and I have a dark flower in this one and this one is I love this purple. It's almost a periwinkle with the cute little white. So for this little pink one that I made here, and it's just so you can see all the differences, how different it looks with just different yarns, this one is Yarn B Soft and Sleek, and I think they just call this pink. Or oh, it's called Mauve. And I didn't even use a whole skein. So this is less than, this is a 232, 232 yards. So you have this much left over. So just one skein makes you a cute hat. I love it. That one aside. And this one, I just love, 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 love this yarn. It is so nice. The first time I've actually really worked with it. This one is Yarn B Alpaca Twist. And this color is, what color did they actually call it? Just purple. Just called it purple. I think it's more of a lavender or periwinkle or something, but I just love this hat. These little ridges right here. Cute little spot for a stick pin. My cute little brim that flips up. So let's make it. And today I have decided to use this really pretty baby yellow. I lost the band for it. It broke a long time ago, but I know this is Red Heart Super Saver in probably baby yellow or something. So in order to do this pattern, we're going to need a four and a half and a four. So a four millimeter hook and a four and a half millimeter hook. A cute little pin or stick pin. You're going to want two stitch markers and perhaps you might want a button depending on how your brim stays up. I have a little button on here. If it doesn't want to stay up, you can just button. So it'll be cute. All right, so we start out with our four and a half millimeter. We're going to use this four and a half for quite some time and change to a four later. Get my yarn going and we're going to start out with a magic circle. Here, and in case you don't know how to make a magic circle, I do have a tutorial out there for it. You can catch, it's only a few minutes long. All right, so there's our magic circle. In our magic circle, we want to put six single crochets. So there's one and we're going to be working in the round here so I always mark my stitches especially when I'm working in a spiral. I know some people think that is crazy. You shouldn't have to use you shouldn't have to use stitch markers like well why why would you not want to save time? That would be like not marking your book page just because you think you can remember what page you're on. So there we go. There's one, six in the magic circle, six single crochets. There's two, three, four, five, and six. Remember we started out with our four and a half hook, six single crochets in my magic circle, and the first one is marked. I'm going to pull this original tail, get this nice and tight. Actually, I'm going to leave it open for just a little bit until we get this one in so I don't pull that stitch too tight. So we start from the top down. This hat is made from the top down. So we're going to start right here in the center. So our next row is, a, or our next round is an increase. So in order to do that when you're working in the round and making a circle, we're going to put two single crochets in every stitch. So two in each one of our six stitches. So after this round is over, there will be 12. So 
So there's one, two, three, and twelve. So there we go. Round two is already done. Round three is another increase. So increasing the third row is a single crochet in the first stitch. Single crochet, single crochet in the first stitch, and the next stitch gets two single crochets. One, two. And that is the sequence all the way around. One single crochet, two single crochets. We are increasing this round up to 18. And there's my last two stitches. Round three complete. Now we can pull this a little tighter. So there's round three. I'm going to do that just as easily for round four. It's another increase. So increasing just like a normal, making a circle. We're going to put single crochet number one in the next stitch, or in the first stitch. So we're gonna put, so we'll put two single crochets in this first stitch. So there's one, and there's two, and the next two stitches each get one single crochet. So there's a single and a single, and that's the sequence all the way around. Two in this stitch, and one in the next two stitches. Two in the stitch. in the next two stitches, all the way back to your marker. And one single crochet in the last stitch. And we just increased again, now we're at 24. 24 stitches all the way around. Round five is another increase. Single crochet in the first three. So there's my first one, there's number two, and there's number three, and then two in that stitch. That's the sequence all around. Three single crochets in a row, and two in the next stitch. And the last sequence. One single crochet, two single crochet, three single crochet, and two in the last stitch. And there's round five. And we just increased up to 30 stitches. 30 stitches all the way around now. And it goes pretty fast. Round six, first stitch gets two single crochets in the same stitch. And I'm going to remark my stitch. So two in this first stitch. And then the next four each get one single crochet. One, two, three, and four. One, two in this stitch and the next four each get a single crochet. That's the sequence all the way around. Back to the stitch marker. And there's my last sequence. There's two. And the last four stitches each get a single crochet. And that's row six. We have increased up to 36. All right, for round seven, the first five stitches get a single crochet, and then uh, we will do our increase in the sixth stitch. So there's one. Two. Three. Four 
and five. And then the increase is two single crochets in the same stitch. And it's the sequence all the way around. One, two, and here's my last sequence. One, two, three, four, five, and an increase in my last stitch here for two in that stitch. There you go. That's round seven. We just increased up to 42. Guess what? We're going to increase again. Surprise, surprise. So in round eight, we're increasing up to 48. So we're going to put two single crochets in our first stitch. And then I'm going to mark it. So there's my first one in that stitch, and there's the second. In row eight, the sequence is increase, and then there's six single crochets in between each increase. So there's one, and two, three, four, five, six, and an increase, there's two in the same stitch. And my last sequence, there's an increase with two single crochets in the same stitch, and then six single crochets back down to my stitch marker. And that was round eight, increased up to 48 stitches in the round. All right, so on to row nine, or round nine, we're going to increase again. So if we're doing this, it's a sequence of seven single crochets in a row and then the increase of two single crochets in the same stitch. Each one gets a single crochet, so that was one, and there's two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and then the increase of two single crochets in the same stitch. That's the same sequence all the way around. Six and seven. My last stitch here is an increase. So two single crochets in that stitch. And there ends round nine with an increase up to 54 stitches. Round 10 is another increase round. We're almost done increasing, but this part is really important. Another increase round. So it's the sequence is two single crochets and then eight single crochets in between each increase. So there's my first stitch. And two in that first stitch. And now eight single crochets, the next stitch, eight stitches each get their own. And then two stitches, two single crochets in this stitch for an increase. Same, that, se that sequence is the same all the way around. Seven and eight. And round 10 is complete. All right, around 11, still another increase. We just increased on round 10 up to 60. We're going to increase to 66 stitches now with round 11. So the first nine, get a single crochet, and then we'll do the increase. So there's one. So again, that was the first nine. There's one, and two, eight, and nine, and an increase in the next stitch of two single crochets in the same stitch. And that's the sequence we'll use all the way around. Again, nine single crochets in a row, and then an increase. Eight, nine, and then my last stitch is going to get two single crochets for my increase. So there's the end of round 11. We have increased up to 66 on the top of our hat. One last round of increase. So one more time. 
going to put in the first stitch we'll get two single crochets and then there will be 10 single crochets in a row and then another increase. So here our first stitch gets two. There's one and two and then 10 in between. One, two, three, eight, nine, and 10. And that is round 12. We increased up to 72. Now we're done with our increases for the top of our hat. Right here is done. All the way through here is done. Now we get into down here where we have more of a pattern, a little bit of texture, and our ridges. So this is fun. Still using our four and a half. And the next three rounds are all the same. But this is round 13. We are going to do a herringbone double crochet. So in our very first stitch here that I just took the marker off of, we're going to yarn over, go into that stitch, pull through, and then pull underneath our yarn over. So it's almost like a half a slip stitch there. Yarn over and pull through the first loop, and then yarn over and pull through both. So let's try that again. I'm going to mark it though. So again, it's a, this is a herringbone double crochet. Yarn over through the stitch, pull the yarn through, and slip stitch under that first loop. Grab the yarn, pull through the first loop, grab your yarn, pull through two. We'll do that again. Yarn over through the stitch, pull through, under the first loop, through the second loop, through two loops. Under the first loop, through the first loop, through the second loop, and then through two. Under, through the first loop, through the second loop. Under, through the first loop, through two loops. Under, through the first loop, through two loops. This is a great stitch. I just love this stitch. This is one of my new favorites. I've been working with it a little bit lately and I really, really like it. So that is our sequence all the way around. Very easy round. 72 herringbone double crochets all the way around back to your stitch marker. My last stitch for round 13. See how cute this is? It says it's a double crochet, but it ends up going off, just leaning off to the side just a little bit, and I just think it's a really cute stitch. Really cute stitch. Instead of going straight up and down, it's just off to the side just a little bit. But make sure we have 72 stitches because you're going to need them all. There's not a lot of wiggle room in this because we are going to start counting a little bit differently in a bit. But again, this was round 13. Here I'm going double crochet. Two more rounds. Round 14 and round 15 are exactly the same. So I'll meet you back at the stitch marker after round 15. All right, and my last two stitches of round 15. Double or it's a hairy and bone double, double crochet. So slip under, through first, and then through two. And here's my last one. There, round 15 is done. So what we did was this part right here, right underneath the flower, right here. And you can see that they go at a bit of an angle. Very interesting, and I think it looks really cute. Usually you, people do this one back and forth in rows so it goes crisscross, crisscross, crisscross. But I think this looks cool because it's just, everything is just kind of heading that way. So round 16, we're going to have to get out our other, our other stitch marker. Round 16 is where we start getting a little bit 
a little bit extra counting. So the first 15 stitches will be single crochets. So there's one, and I'm going to use the starch marker right here. So again, that was one, we want to do 15, and 15. So there's the first 15 of round 16. Now I want to take my other stitch marker, and I'm going to count backwards from here. Of the stitches we haven't worked for this round yet, I want to count back 15. Not the one that's marked, but the one that's right next to it, and count back 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And I'm going to mark that 15th stitch. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And then there's a stick. Then there's our stitch marker. So in between, after this 15, and, it, and all the way over to this, we are going to do back post double crochets. And I think this is my new favorite stitch combination. I, th I have a feeling I made this up the other day because I've never seen this before but I just love the way it works out. So we're on top of our the post for our herringbone double crochet we are going to do back post double crochet. Now this part is super important. We are going to end up doing 42 of them. There's 15 single crochets here. The last 15 will be single crochets and these will be 42 in between. But this part is really important. Right here, this stitch has already been used. It was our last single crochet. It was right here. So don't use that post. You want to go over to this post right here. So we're going to yarn over, skip this post because that stitch has technically been used from the behind, come through, grab our yarn, and then do a double crochet like normal. Through two and through two. And do that again. The next stitch, come from behind and around that post, pull through, double crochet. Again, this is the next stitch right here. and a double crochet. So we're going around the post, not in the top of the stitch, we're going around the post. And there'll be 42 of those all the way till the next stitch marker. And here are my last two stitches for round 16. Both of them are back post double crochets right here and right there. Okay, now these last 15 stitches are just single crochets all the way to the blue. That was our starting, that was our starting stitch. So right here, single crochet all the way back down to our starting stitch marker. Single crochets, 15 of them in a row. And there we go. That's round. 16. And you can see here's the first 15 on this side, there's 15 on this side, but we started making a little bit of a ridge right here. Right there, which is right here. So cute. I just love it. So round 17 is easy. Just all the way around in herringbone double crochets. Again, that was over. Pull through and go under the first loop. Yarn over through that loop and yarn over through two. All the way around. Put the herringbone double crochets all the way around for round 17. And meet you back at the stitch marker in just a second. Here's my last three 
herring bone double crochets for round 17. To our original, our first stitch marker. All right, so round 17 is done. Just a round of herringbone double crochets all the way around. Now round 18, just like we did the two rounds ago. In round 16, we count. We did 15 single crochets. This time we're going to do 14. So there's a single crochet. I'm going to change my stitch marker over. So again, this is the first 14 stitches will be a single crochet each. Two and 14. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and 14. I'm going to use my stitch marker on this side and mark off in this side. 14. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and 14. And the reason I do that is because sometimes I get on a roll and I'll end up way over here and then I have to count and rip out all my stitches anyway. So I just mark it. When I get on my roll I have to do 44 back post double crochets this time all the way around and then I know when to stop. So again, this stitch right here is already used with this single crochet which belongs to this post. So we have to make sure we are going around the proper post, which would be this guy right here with our back post double crochets. And you're going to do 44 all the way around to the other stitch marker that is marking off our last 14 stitches. So this will be 44 back post double crochets. And here's my last two back post double crochets for this round. Now I made it to the stitch marker that is marking off these last 14 stitches and they will all be single crochets each. Each one gets a single crochet. 14 down to the original stitch marker. One, two, three. 14 and that completes round 18 and we made another ridge we made this one right here so we only have this much left don't have that much to go really so this is great Okay, and now row 19 is probably, you already probably already figured out what row 19 is going to be, or round 19 is going to be. It is a whole round of herringbone double crochets. So 72 herringbone double crochets all the way around back to our stitch marker. So we got the herringbone double crochet. Another round of those. And my last two herringbone double crochets right here. And that completes round 19. And it's starting to look like a hat. I love it. Didn't you look like a hat? Round 20, you'll be able to follow the theme here. The first 13 stitches. Here we did 15, here we did 14. So this round is going to be 13. The first 13 stitches will all be single crochets. So there's one, two, and 13. Now I'm going to take my stitch marker, my other marker, and I'm going to count this way 13 so that I can go 
be Speedy Gonzales all the way around here and not have to count to 46. So here's, we're going to go back 13. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Mark that 13th stitch. So again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Now we know that everything in between the stitch markers all the way around is going to be our back post double crochet so we can just go really fast. So again, this stitch has already been used by right here. This very closest stitch is already used right here by our very last single crochet. So we have to go around this post right here and do a back post double crochet. And continue all the way until you hit that other stitch marker. My last two back post double crochets. There we go. And now there's our last 13 are going to be single crochets. See, I didn't have to count all those. I just got to the stitch marker and I knew I was done. And 13. That was round 20. We made our third ridge right here. So we just have the brim left to do. Easy peasy. Alright, there's going to be one more complete round of herringbone double crochet all the way around. 72 herringbone double crochets. Boom, boom, boom. That will be round 21. Easy, super easy. Just herringbone double crochets all the way around back to the blue stitch marker. So here's my last one. That was the end of round 21. Alrighty, round 22 is a little bit different. We're going to increase again so we can get this part of the brim. So what we're going to do is single crochet is first 11. Just the first 11. first stitch. Working in the round. Alright, so again, that was the first one. We're going to do 11 single crochets. There's two and 11. And just like we did before, I'm going to mark the 11 off on the other direction. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 1, 2, 3, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's a lot easier to count eleven than it is to figure out what's going on here in the middle. Right, so there's our first eleven. There are fifty stitches from here back to here. So we want to take these fifty stitches right here and increase them to seventy-five. So the way that we're going to do that. Just like when we were increasing, we were in the round at the very beginning of the hat. We're going to do a single crochet. And in the next one gets two single crochets. Single crochet. Two single crochets. Single crochet. And two in the same stitch. And we're going to do that until we get to the orange stitch marker. So all the way around here, we're going to alternate. One single to crochet and two single crochets in a stitch. So we're increasing our 50 stitches up to 75. 73 and two in the last stitch for 74 and 
75. We have to do our last 11 single crochets right here. So that was our increases all the way around from 50 to 75 and now we're going to do 11 single crochets all the way back to our original stitch marker which was the blue one and that will finish round 22 and one more single crochet round 22 complete Let's see, there's our ridges, one, two, three. There's our ridges, one, two, three. So now we're down in here already. Right about here. So this is awesome. Remember, this was a four and a half millimeter hook. So we're going to set him aside now and grab the four millimeter hook. While we do the brim, we're going to use a smaller hook. So for round 23, single crochet the first 10 and 10. And so here's our first 10 for round 23, but then instead of marking off 10 on this side, which is probably where you thought it was going to go, we are going to actually mark off 32. So let's get started counting here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 4, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, and 32. And I'm going to mark that stitch with my stitch marker. These are going to be single crochets now. Not just 10, 32. In between here and here, our herringbone double crochets, which you should be an expert at because you've already done thousands of them in this hat. So, here we go. Herringbone double crochet to the orange stitch marker. And this is round 23. All the way to the other stitch marker with our herringbone double crochets. And we'll meet back up with our stitch marker that's marking off the last 32. So our last 32 stitches till we get to the blue stitch marker, which was the one that was our original that starts our round. Then all the way between these is 32 single crochets. and 32. There we go, that is round 23. Rounds 24, 25, 26, and 27 are exactly the same thing as that. So the first on this side is 10 single crochets. In the middle is 55 herringbone double crochets and at the end we have 32 single crochets. So, 10 single crochets, 55 herringbone double crochets, 32 single crochets all the way around for four more rounds. That was the end of round 23. We need 24, 25, 26, and 27. 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27. We're all the same. Five rounds of, we'll do 10 single crochets, 55 half, or herringbone double crochets, and then 32 single crochets. Five rows of that. Now we're on our very last round, and this one is really, really easy. We are going to single crochet in the front loop only all the way around, which is right here. Just get this little loop in the front right here, not both, just this little front loop right here. We're almost done. All the way around, front loop only single crochets. Just go right in between the two parts of that stitch and single crochet the front loop only. 
all the way around back to the blue stitch marker. There's the last few stitches, round 28. These were 97 front loop only single crochets. We're done. We're done, we're done, we're done. Hooray! So we're just going to finish off in this marked stitch, in a slip stitch, and then a chain, and there's my scissors, snip. You get rid of our stitch markers now. There you go, and I just you just weave in your ends however you wish to do so. This original one right here from the middle. You can just do a couple of quick stitches inside here with your needle. So now we have our hat. I know this doesn't look right yet, so we have to fold our brim up. Now you can see this spot right here, right here where these are single crochets, and then we're getting into our brim. Single crochets getting into the brim. And I have my pin going through all three of these. Oh, about this far in. Starting that way, going at a little bit of an angle. So I have my cute little green flower. You could put the pin anywhere you want. I just thought this looked really cute the way that it was. Use any pin, any brooch. Could probably even use a really cute button and do a gather right here. So here's our cute hat. Isn't it just adorable? You can tell how different it looks with no matter which color you use. The pink one with the dark flower I made. And I love this purple one. This was the alpaca, alpaca twist I think it was from Hobby Lobby. And I just love it with the little white flower and it's so cute. You can use any pin that you want. And this part right here would be optional. On the opposite side from your flower if you want. You can put a little button right here and it can go through any stitch that you want it to if your brim is not staying up where you want it to stay. And it'll hold it up. Be perfect like that if it doesn't stay up by itself. It's like the pink one right here, this one stays up by itself. It depends on the yarn, it depends on your stitch. I love my flapper hat. So cute. With the little stick pin, just adorable. Make them in a thousand different colors and have one for go with everything. So thanks for stopping by. Thank you for supporting my small business. Please subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications, tell all your friends, and stop back soon. I've got some great things coming up. Thanks. Bye.